you know, the, the, those economists who were arguing for a bigger stimulus were sort of moved aside. And then, um, I think they were, you know, I think they were moved aside. I don't think they argued as strongly as they're claiming they argue after the fact. Larry Summers was arguing for a bigger stimulus. By then, the politics were pretty tough. I'm not sure he listened to, I think he listened to Tim Geithner about the financial rescue. Um, uh, I, Tim Geithner, for me, is a very timid, was a very timid treasury secretary. And, and that analysis by uh, um, Bear, Sheila Bear, in the new book, the head of the FDIC, I think is by and large right. He tried to protect the banks much too much. And Obama listened to it. So there were lots of errors there. Uh, I just don't think he, he was courageous about taking those advisors. Having said that, Gene Sperling is um, trying to get a little more involved. He's now a top economic advisor. He was a Clinton advisor. He's very much advocating public investment now, uh, making a big case against mainstream economists. So some of that's going on. But I think Obama's heart is still in making cutting the, de cutting the deficit the basic overall framework for his economic policy. And I think you've got to be pessimistic about America if that's going to prevail. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are there other questions? Well, we had originally planned to have a little bit of a small group discussion. I don't know that we really have time for that. but. Um, Sarah Pfeiffer has left some handouts on your table that have some open-ended questions, and we especially encourage people who are thinking about government getting ready to vote um, in a few weeks to, you know, sort of meditate on these questions. Think about if you want to get involved. There's a great website that the Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt Institute has uh, put up on rediscovering government. You can also take home the pamphlet, which covers some of what Jeff. Um, discussed today and, and talks a little bit more in depth about some of the other myths, which I think are, are really interesting. Um, and we encourage you to do that. And please feel free to um, stay after, have some food, talk to Jeff. Um, he's very willing to answer questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I just want to make sure there's no other. Mark, can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Kind of depressing. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's a lot of young people here, and, I, and so I'm just wondering. I know when Obama was elected the first time, and uh, we were across the street at Grant Park. Uh, I was hoping he would, the next day, announce a new WPA and, and maybe bullet trains or, or some program like that. Do you think there's any? I mean, if if you were advising him, well, I take it you would advise a stimulus. Would that be it, or what would you suggest? To well, I would suggest, I would say we need a clear-cut four-year plan. Uh, and that plan has to include very serious infrastructure investment. It could be bullet trains, it could be local mass transit, it could be transit from suburbs to city. There are lots of alternatives besides fast trains. I'm from Detroit, so I like the bullet trains. <laughs> <laughs> but we tend to be, we tend to be a little more, too much monopoly on the bullet train, but I've talked on the bullet train. I like bullet trains too. And remember, France, uh, Spain, my mom is from Spain, is replete with bullet trains, and it seemed to just bring people to the, it didn't, it had, it had beneficial effects, but it also contributed probably to the tourism boom and the housing boom and the tourist areas. So you've got to be a little bit careful about that, but yeah, what if a big program of public investment, a big program of help to the cities, this stuff about blaming public pensions for Fire workers, police, I mean, in some areas, clearly people are over there. School teachers, has anybody heard about that in Chicago? Um, uh, this is, has gotten pretty crazy. Be this is not what's causing the current financial problems. It's the recession, it's the collapse of the housing boom. Public pensions could be a problem over time. If we get the economy back on track, if the stock market rises again, so pension funds are making returns the way they used to, that problem is going to recede. It won't go away. But it's an example of a kind of short-term alarmist thinking. And my advice to Obama would be, we've really got to think long-term. We do need an infrastructure bank. We really need it. And you've got to go fight for it now. We do need to get money to the cities and states so they can get over the short-term problem and not change this whole structure of how 
public employees from school teachers to firemen are paid. I, uh, it's not that public pensions are too generous. Some are. Most are. It's that private pensions have collapsed in America. We got to start thinking about that. I mean, you know, if I sat, I could be more pessimistic than I was today. If I sat and wrote down all the problems we face. But on the other hand, when things are weakest, maybe what I want to leave the kids with though is, it's time to go fight. Things just don't work out without a fight. And America lived to become great because people were willing to fight. Yes, sir. I wanted to follow up on. On the Dean's comment about the fact that there's so many young people where your message is really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, though, you were just saying the Occupy Movement. And the Occupy Movement is a place where a lot of people are coming together and trying to figure out how can we make something different. Yeah. And they realize that the current political system, as you've admitted, is completely corrupt in the case of yeah, I, I so I don't think things are so depressing if you if you look beyond Washington, look beyond the the development. Well, some guy, you know, a lot of people think the Occupy movement fizzled. I think there's a different story there. You know, there's a Zuccotti Park fizzle because the government got together and stopped it. You know, there's a very a big story that's not fully appreciated. Professor Edwards taught one of the first classes on the Occupy movement. Ah, well, you probably know more than I, but actually was involved with some of the early uh, organizers. And, uh, you know, I do think. Uh, uh, Dinkins, I was going to say, uh, Bloomberg, Kelly, Wall Street, always had a plan in mind to totally evict them. And they succeeded. They succeeded. But, you know, the phrase, uh, we are the 99%, had enormous impact. So I do think that led to change. But it's hard to plan change like that. As you well know, that was by and large spontaneous. And, and by and large, they were shining. You know, my one bit, I, I, this was written about, so I think I can say, say it. My bit of advice to them was, don't come up with plans. Shine the spotlight on injustice. Lose it back and don't just let the, the Arab Spring, the book by, as you probably know, the book by Stefan Sell and then the Abu, A Time for Outrage, I think, in English. Uh, talk basically about injustice. So yeah, let's talk about injustice. I mean, I just, you know, I think we have to begin, the, the movement did not begin with optimism. The movement began with something more like what I'm talking about, which was a sense of desperation. We got to take something up. We got to shout. We need some civil disobedience. Not much, they didn't really do much civil disobedience. But, but it began in pessimism, not in optimism. And optimism is, a, oh, let me vote for my Democratic congressman. Don't worry about it. They took to the streets. And the counteract, you know, what's really scary about it is they were stopped by government in many respects. I think the slow, the, the icon, iconography lives on, I think it's very powerful. So that may be the right. Thank you so much, Jeff. I just wanted to um, offer you a little gift on the auditorium building, and I'm actually thrilled to, to give this to you because Jeff just told me that his wife is a big Louis Sullivan. Big Louis Sullivan. So, um, thank you so much. We do have a Louis Sullivan building. Oh, excellent. And you should come visit. It's on the Well, I just want to thank you so much for coming today. We also have a really stuff of the staircase in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, in case you have nothing to do. Stop by, spend some money in New York. <laughs>